My dream job was to be a teacher. I wanted to be an air hostess. I wanted to be an air hostess. I met a tall, glamorous American air hostess and I wanted to be just like her. I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to be a ballet dancer. I wanted to be a bank teller. I was too busy riding bikes and swimming at the beach and having fun. I wanted to be just like Pippi Longstocking and go on adventures with my pet monkey, my horse and the kids next door. So today I am the director of the InVivo Biology in research. I'm the commercial operations director for vaccines at Securus. I am the director of early development operations. I'm responsible for manufacturing safe and effective anti-venoms and Q-fever vaccine for the Australian population. I'm vice president and head of global licensing at CSL. What we do each day when we come to work is strive to bring uh, medicines to patients with rare and life-threatening diseases. My first job in biotech was very boring and unpaid. I had to wash tubes by hand and how to club them. Spending hours locked away in a room sticking labels on hundreds of bottles. There were hundreds of urine and faeces samples to look forward to each day. My big break came when I took on a planning manager role at CSL when I decided that I'd had a great time being a medical representative, but I wanted to take on people management responsibilities. When I moved to London, I worked for Fisher Scientific and I spent my days negotiating issues with distributors in Saudi Arabia, Zimbabwe, Botswana. When I got into the workforce, I realised what pressure is. Not everybody agreed with me. You never stop being a student. So having an expertise is one thing, but being able to work with other people in different departments was really critical. I needed to develop my voice and be able to stand up for myself, my values and my integrity. That working for a global company can be really challenging, especially when you're trying to juggle telecoms at all hours of the day and night and balance your family life. The one thing I've learned is to back myself more and recognise earlier when it's time to move on to the next role, the next challenge. Is not be afraid to ask for more resources. And worry less and sleep more. The one thing I would do differently is I would have a lot more confidence in myself. Back yourself, you know, if you've got something to say, for God's sake, just say it. It's only then that you learn to grow and develop professionally. If I could write a letter to my younger self, I'd really just tell me to not sweat the small stuff. I would tell myself to aim high, go after your goals and always dream big. Just make sure you love what you do and you learn how to negotiate a fair salary. I would tell her to hang on to a few fashion favourites. They will come back. Looking to the future, I want to continue to challenge myself. I really would like to go back and give to the younger generations. I'm looking to achieve work-life balance. I think as women, we wear a lot of hats and I believe that we can do it all. I think I would have made a good teacher, but teaching Spanish literature in Australia would be quite tough. However, I think that if I offer free tapas and sangrias, I would feel the wrong. From time to time, I do think of Pippi Longstocking, but then again, I don't have red hair. Would I have made a good air hostess? Well, that depends. I spend a lot of time on planes and I know the Qantas champagne list inside out.